Lakeland Public Television presents Currents. Hello, and welcome to Lakeland Currents. I'm Bethany Wesley. When you think about your local property taxes, what are the priorities you think they should fund? Police officers? Road repairs? Perhaps park improvements? For tonight's discussion, we are going to focus on a core service that you quite possibly may never need, yet always expect to be readily available, fire protection. The Minnesota State Fire Marshal reports that there were more than 14,000 fire incidents reported throughout the state in 2015. Of those, 4,675 were residential structure fires, causing more than $130 million in total dollar loss. On average, a fire is reported once every 37 minutes in Minnesota, according to the fire marshal. More specifically, a structure fire is reported once every 86 minutes. But statistics only tell part of the story, and so tonight I welcome to the program two fire chiefs. David Hofer is the chief of the Bemidji Fire Department, and Seth Tram is the chief of the Solway Fire Department. Together, they will inform us of the services provided by their respective departments, and discuss the considerations that go into fire department planning. Welcome to the program. Thanks for joining us. Thank As you. we get started, let's just give us a little bit of background in terms of how long you've been with your departments and then talk generally in a little bit here about the departments themselves. Dave, how long have you been with the Bemidji Fire Department? Sure, I've been a fire chief uh, with Bemidji uh, since 2010, so uh, my seventh uh, anniversary just recently. Um, started in the fire service in 1990. Okay, and where did you come from before? Uh, I was a firefighter in Grand Forks. Okay. North Dakota. And Seth, how long have you been with Solway? I joined the department in 2007, so 10 years ago. I've been the chief since 2011. Okay, great. One of the reasons I'm so excited to have the two of you here is because we can really kind of talk about the differences between your departments because they are operated very differently. And our viewers, because some are in the city and some are rural, can really hopefully get something out of both of them. So let's talk about your departments themselves. Seth, how big is your department? How many firefighters do you have? We have 17 total firefighters right now. And it is different because you are a complete volunteer fire department. That is correct. Okay. Yep, 100% volunteer. So you guys don't get paid per call, it's just there it's people give up their own time. That's correct. Okay, awesome. Yep. And now what areas do you cover because you cover more than just Solway itself? We do. Yep. So we co cover the city of Solway and we cover three townships, um, Buzzle, Lammers and Jones townships. Okay. All on the western um, edge of Beltrami County. And has that been the case for years? years. Okay. Yep. Awesome. And tell us a little bit about how Bemidji is set up, because you have a combination fire department. Sure, yeah, Bemidji is a uh, combination fire department, so we have a mix of full-time staff, um, seven full-time staff members, uh, full-time firefighters, um, and then I'm a full-time fire chief. So we've got eight full-time staff members, and then we are supplemented by uh, 40 uh, paid-on-call firefighters. So um, folks who have other jobs, who their primary job is not firefighting, but who we will bring in on larger incidents. So. Okay. Um, we serve um, not only the city of Bemidji, but um, 17 other local units of government around the Bemidji area, okay. 15 townships, and a couple of the smaller cities, um, Wilton and Turtle River. Um, we do that from three fire stations, um, strategically placed um, throughout the Bemidji area. Um, our firefighters then, um, for us, most or majority of our calls are handled by our on-duty fire uh, okay. staff. Um, when we need additional help, that's when we'll bring in our uh, paid on call firefighters um, from, our, from our group of 40. Okay. And now let's talk just in terms of ballpoint. How many, uh, ballpark, how many calls do you have average a year? Uh, we do between 30 and 35 calls a year. Okay. Yep. And that includes not only structure fires, but um, rescue, you know, motor vehicle accidents, um, alarms, things like that. Okay. All the calls all together. Correct. And then for you, all calls all together average? Yeah. Yep, for um, Bemidji Fire um, in 2016, we did 2,195 um, responses and um, 107 um, working fires. So, and of the 107 um, fires, uh, 36 were structural, and then we have some wildland fires along with vehicle fires and, and dumpster fires type stuff. So. And now, in addition to your two departments, there's also other various departments in this Bemidji area. Correct. I mean, you've got Cass Lake, you've got Black Duck, you've got a couple of different ones. Correct? Yeah. That's correct. Yep. How important is it for you guys to have communication between all the departments? Yeah, in, in Beltrami County, uh, here in particular, um, we work together a lot with the other firefighting agencies. Um, so from Bermidji's perspective, um, one of our primary mutual aid partners, or 
um, neighboring departments that we work with a lot is Solway. Um, and anytime we need additional resources, um, whether that's people, equipment, if we're on multiple fires at the same time, um, we have the ability to, to call um, one another for help. And um, it's not only the structural fire departments, but it's also the wildland firefighting agencies in, in northern Minnesota. Um, the big partner for Bemidji is the Minnesota DNR um, for wildfires, but um, we also partner up with uh, our folks to the east and, and the Chippewa uh, National Forest. Okay. So um, we all have the same interest in fire protection up here, but uh, one of the things that we do on a, on a regular basis here in Beltrami is, is our fire chiefs are, are very active. Um, we, we meet on a regular basis um, to discuss issues of the day, discuss how we are going to provide quality fire protection, um, realizing the fact that there will be challenges that all of our agencies face, no matter what the size of your agency, and we all are gonna need help one, uh, at times from one another, um, and the philosophy of, of neighbors helping neighbors. As a smaller department, have you seen the benefit of that, Seth, in oh, terms of talking to others? Yeah, without a doubt. So, um, you know, being a volunteer department, we we strive to give you know 100 percent in everything that we do and that includes response to fires um but given our location we don't always have we don't always have rapid response especially during the day and so when we can rely on mutual aid partners especially a department like bemidji that's staffed full-time um that's a big benefit not only to our department but to our community and the, and the citizens that we serve so yeah it's it's vital Fair to say, it, throughout the state of Minnesota, there's a number of different ways to fund various fire departments. Not only do you have volunteer combination departments, there's a number of different ways. Mm -hmm. How important is it that a community really kind of looks at what it needs and sets up its department for them specifically? Yeah, ultimately it's up to the community to decide what type and level of fire protection they're gonna have. Um, I think um, a lot of it's based upon um, what the community needs are, but um, there is nothing in Minnesota that says that you have to have a fire department. Um, I think what you see is, um, you'll see various levels um, based upon what is an acceptable tolerance within a community, and then you'll see different structures in which fire departments are organized. So um, in Bemidji, we are a municipal fire department. We are a government-ran organization, but that isn't the only way in which fire protection is accomplished in, in the state. And um, Seth can talk about Solway Fire and how they're organized a little bit. Um, and, and Seth is not unique. There are a number of fire departments that are, are what he's going to describe. Okay. So tell us a little bit about the setup of yours. Yeah. So our um, fire department is a um, nonprofit organization. It's an independent nonprofit. And so we, um, we have our own executive board um, and we contract then with townships. So essentially those townships are our customers okay. um, of the nonprofit organization. And we essentially make those decisions based on... Um, what we feel we can provide. So as we were mentioning earlier, you know, um, we can't necessarily provide a great service for townships that are 10 miles away from us or 20 miles away from us. And so we really try to focus on, on um, those core townships that, that directly surround the city of Solway. Um, and we feel we can provide them with good coverage. And so that's what we base our, um, our business plan on. Um, and you know, so we have that we have that board of directors essentially, which is uh, a fire chief, an assistant fire chief, and then we have a secretary and a treasurer. Okay. Um, all the decisions that we make, rather than going to a city board or a township board, are then made within our department. Okay. You know, and so we we of course try to be transparent with the townships that we um, that we contract with, but those decisions are made locally. Okay. And whereas you actually go and report to the Bemidji City Council, correct? Correct, yeah. Fire protection for the Bemidji area is, is done through a joint fire protection agreement between the, the city of Bemidji and Bemidji Rural Fire Association. Okay. Um, that forms a group um, of 18 local units of government. Um, and that um, group there is who I would directly report to. So we have a um, operating committee um, that's made up of some city folks and some rural folks. Um, in which I report to. Um, my immediate supervisor, though, is the city manager for the city of Bemidji. The city of Bemidji, uh, in our agreement, is tasked with the day in and day out management um, or running of the fire department. But funding is provided um, from throughout our entire service area. The whole area. Correct. 
I want to talk about the employees a little bit themselves. You have 17 fire fires in your department. You have many more. Who determines or how do you determine what that ideal staffing level is? Is it changed? Does it fluctuate? Go ahead, um, well, I can speak to that on behalf of our department. So our bylaws um, stipulate that we can have up to 25 firefighters at any given time. Okay. Um, in my tenure on the department, we have never been fully staffed, what you would consider fully staffed based on bylaws. Okay. Um, we have always been between, say, 17 and 20 or 21. Um, I think the goal is to be able to provide uh, an efficient service. And so, um, you know, we can do that with the 17 firefighters that we have right now. Um, ideally, 21, 22, or 25 would be would be much better. Okay. Um, but you know, we we never consider ourselves to be fully staffed until we're at that 25. Okay. But in terms of you know efficient um, fire protection, I think we're we're able to do that with where we're at. Ideally, we'd have more. Okay. So for the benefit of our viewers here, a volunteer fire department means these men and women are taking time out of their daily lives and responding when you have a call. Fair to say these people are usually working during the day. Right. Is that a challenge for the department? I think that's one of our biggest obstacles. Um, you know, fires don't always happen uh, between, you know, 6 p.m. and 6 a.m. or on the weekends. Um, and because Solway doesn't have a lot of, uh, of business in terms of, you know, right there in town, uh, many of our firefighters either work in Bemidji or in Bagley um, or they work out of town. And so during the business day, um, our response might be significantly lower than it might be at night. Um, and again, that goes back to mutual aid where it's very important for us to be able to make that call ahead of time. Um, as soon as we know that we're gonna be short, we make that call to either Bemidji or, or another one of our mutual aid partners and get help coming so we can provide that, uh, that service. Okay. And Dave, how do you know what staffing level is appropriate for your department? Yeah, for us, um, 48 Firefighters is a full roster okay. um, with eight full-time staff members and 40 paid on call. And I think part of that is based upon um, some historical trends um, and making sure that we have enough staff members to deal with the typical emergencies that we are going to experience. Knowing that we cannot plan for every extreme case, but the typical emergencies. Um, it's not uncommon in Bemidji to have simultaneous calls to emergencies happening at one time. So when we look at that, we try to assess to make sure that we can put an adequate number of resources, people, um, on our emergency scene. So um, from our perspective, we, we really shoot to try to have on our structural fires, 20 to 25 firefighters on a scene. Okay. Um, so we have a um, system in which we can bring in all 48 um, of our firefighters um, back, which will allow us to do that. So okay. I think staffing is really to, determined upon your community's needs. Um, and it also is determined um, a lot on availability. So when you have um, uh, communities that ha struggle with getting people to respond when they're a, a paid on call or volunteer firefighter, I think that's when communities start looking at that. Maybe they have to start adding some, some paid positions, so. And it's unique based on what the needs are for the community. So for instance, you, your department responds to every commercial passenger flight that comes in and out of the airport, correct? Correct. So last year you had how many, um, give or take? About 1,100 okay. of those, yep. And so is that something that's required of you, of the departments? Is that like a state law, or is that just something that the, the community has decided is important, or how does those come together? Yeah, one of our fire stations, one of the three that we um, have in Bemidji is at the airport. And that fire station not only serves the airfield, but it also serves off of the airfield, the structural and wildland um, response components. So the um, FAA, um, through their regulations, requires fire protection at an airport. Um, airports choose to do that a number of different ways. Um, it could be provided by airport staff, a dedicated airport fire department, or um, municipal departments that provide that. In our case, um, fire protection and rescue services to this airport is provided by Bemidji Fire Department. Okay. So we have a dedicated firefighter um, out at the airport anytime we have a scheduled commercial passenger flight coming in and out of the airport. Um, so that we have a quick response time in the event of an aircraft um, emergency okay. or incident in a passenger flight. So. Um, the airport authority does reimburse us for those services that we're providing out there, which does help us with um, our budget. Okay. 
I want to talk about some of the calls specifically. Can you give us an indication, a kind of maybe a picture in terms of average 35 calls? How many of those are fires versus some of the other calls that you listed, Seth? Yeah, so, um, you know, annually we can have anywhere between three and ten structure fires. Um, those aren't all, of course, homes or businesses. They're, they're outbuildings, they're garages, they're barns. Um, we have several motor vehicle accidents. Highway 2 runs right through our um, service area and that's a heavily traveled road and so we have frequent uh, motor vehicle accidents. Sometimes there are cars in the ditch, sometimes they don't need a response but we get paged out. Okay. Um, and then I would say the, the rest would be wildland fires. We, we do um, between five and ten wildland fires every year depending on how, you know, how the conditions are. But okay. it's, it's probably about a third of each really. Okay. Um, you know, upwards of ten of each of those three. So I know the Bemidji Fire Department, for example, responds to medical calls within the city limits. Do you guys also do medical calls or is that up to each department then as well? Yep, so okay. we do not respond to medical calls. Um, we, we strictly do fire and, and rescue. Okay. Um, for us to be able to provide response to medical calls, um, we, we wouldn't be able to provide that service efficiently because again, most of our, um, most of our firefighters are out of town, especially during the day. Oh, sure. um, and so out there, the, the um, group that is charged with that is really the, the first responder group. So they have West Squad first responders that provide that service. Okay. And then Dave, break down if you can, some of those, the, those calls per year. You have the structure, you have fires and then rescues. Mm -hmm. you know. Could you yep. give us come and break down? Yeah, so um, we, we do about 100 fire responses a year um, on average, and that's, that's a mix of structural fires, wildland fires, vehicle fires, dumpster fires, and, and the nuisance type fires. Um, we also do um, technical rescue responses. So technical rescue is water and ice rescue, motor vehicle extrications, structural collapses, um, elevator rescues, things like that. And we'll do about 150 of those roughly a year. Um, and it kind of depends on, 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 on the year. Um, in addition to that, um, commercial fire alarm activations, um, so somebody burnt some food somewhere, or things like that. We'll do about um, 175 to 200 of those types of responses on an annual basis. Um, within the city of Bemidji, um, and right on the outskirts of Bemidji, um, we will respond um, to life-threatening emergency medical calls. I'm in a non-transport mode. We do not run an ambulance service, but um, we do have the ability to, to get on scene in a timely fashion and um, make a difference um, in life-threatening EMS calls. So really what we're looking at is somebody's not breathing, their heart's not beating, major trauma, um, strokes and things like that. So about 400 um, calls a year um, um, for those. So um, in addition to that, it would be um, some Hazardous materials calls, we typically get a handful of those every year. Um, natural gas leaks, fuel oil spills, um, things like that. Um, and then some of the other miscellaneous hazard calls. Uh, maybe we've got a down arcing power line or, or, or things like that. So, Awesome. I want to talk a little bit about mutual aid and how that, how that works. We've talked a little bit about it here, but take us through an actual example, if you would, Seth. If there was a structure fire in Solway, at what point do you know that you need to call for backup? Um, so that's one of our one of our primary goals is to assess what staff we have coming in and then what our needs are going to be and if we assess that our needs are going to be more than what we have um, to make that call early. Um, we, you know, any, at any given time we'll have between say 10 and 15 firefighters responding to a call. Um, minor incidents, that's plenty to cover what we need. Um, if we have a, an active structure fire, we're going to make that call early. Um, and, and primarily that's to Dave's team in Bemidji. Okay. Um, being a, being a full-time uh, service, we know that they can get a truck started in a hurry, mm -hmm. usually have a crew um, on the road within just a couple minutes. And so um, we really rely on that in terms of uh, what, our, what our active response is going to be to a fire. Um, I guess from a, you know, from a standpoint of, of adequate staffing, it's really based on what the situation is. You know, we have we cover Northwoods, for example, the the um, OSB mill okay. um, west of town here, and we get called there several times a year. And sometimes it's it's fairly minor, and other times it's larger. And so um, we really try to make that assessment early. Um, again, depending on the situation, we we make the call. We we would much rather err on the side of caution 
um, and get a team coming, and then end up turning them around if we if we get on scene and we know that we're you know that that uh, extra help isn't needed. Um, but we don't want to get behind the eight ball and and uh, you know then help is help is farther away than we want mm -hmm. it to be. So okay. And then Dave, is it fair to assume that you get called out for mutual aid more often than you get it, or is it about equal or? I think it's about equal. Um, we, we have a similar philosophy um, in Bemidji that, that Solway does. In, um, I expect our incident commanders to assess scenes early on, anticipate resource needs, and if we do not have adequate resources, um, to ask for help pretty early on. Okay. Um, and that could mean additional firefighters, or a common one that we do with our mutual aid partners is, is just shuttling water, bring, bringing water to a structural fire. Um, or if we're taxed and stretched thin on multiple fires, bringing some, some folks in uh, to help. So one of the things that we have up in Beltrami County is we have a, a countywide mutual aid agreement. So in, in addition to our local mutual aid agreements that each of the fire departments have with their neighboring departments, we have all entered into a countywide mutual aid agreement. So Seth and I may run up to Kellier, for example, and assist Kellier Fire even though it's 50 plus miles away on a large scale incident. Um, and Bemidji is also part of the statewide mutual aid plan and there are a number of larger um, departments throughout the state that participate in a statewide mutual aid plan and one of the things that um, we do there is we have the ability to deploy anywhere in the state of Minnesota um, if, if requested in if we can if we can do it um, that's the other thing that mutual aid agreements do is we all have to assess our individual ability to provide help via mutual aid request. Okay. So there have been times um, in some of our statewide requests where Bemidji has said no. And the fact is that we didn't have the resources to deploy and still have an adequate level of protection here in Bemidji. Um, so that's, that, that's some of the things that work out really well. Um, you are seeing lots of cooperation amongst Minnesota Fire Service agencies today um, in, in, in people helping one another. and. I think that's making us much more effective and efficient. I think that's uh, helping us keep fires smaller. Um, there's lots of great examples of, of, of that. So, I want to talk more than just the fire protections and or responding to the actual fires themselves. Um, how important or how big of a part do you play in terms of fire prevention and education and reaching outside and talking to people and having programs? Does your department do that, Seth? Do you go out and? We, we do. So. Um our, our scope is fairly narrow. Um, we, we provide annual education at the school in Solway. So um, kids, let's see, we have K through five out there, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, and we do that annually every, every uh, fall. Okay. Um, additionally, we do some, some um, kind of cold weather safety, um, and that's usually in collaboration with Dave's team um, at the school in Solway. Um, we've also done historically some courses for like the um, NEL group, it's Northern Exposure to Lifelong oh, okay. Learning, 55 Alive, some things like that. Um, but our scope is fairly small. Again, this is done with volunteer people and so um, we, we do absolutely what we can. Education is, uh, is primarily important, you know, and, and anytime we can get out there in the community, we like to do that. And tell us about some of the activities that your, your department does, because I know you have a number of different programs you kind of do to do that so how do you how does that work yeah fire prevention for us is is, is pretty high on the priority list um, we know that there is only so much we can do when we're in a reactive response mode but we can do a lot on the prevention side and in, in Bemidji our, our prevention program really is, is twofold it's an educational component along with the code enforcement component so our educational component is we've got a number of different target audiences that will go hit. Mm -hmm. um, not only the school age kids, but it, it could be some adult groups. Um, it could be some college students, um, but very, very um, progressive um, public education campaign on just describing to folks what are the common causes of fire. And if a fire does start, how do we act appropriately? Um, we, we know that that's real important to do that. So we spend hundreds of hours a year doing um, fire prevention education. Yeah. Some of the programs that we're involved with is um, we've partnered up with the American Red Cross for um, smoke alarm installations. Oh, okay. So if, if you're in the Bemidji area and you need a smoke alarm, we will give you a smoke alarm free of charge. We will come out and install it for you. Um, we know that um, working smoke alarms will save lives. 
Okay. So we are um, we do that very aggressively and, and install smoke alarms. So the other part of our um, fire prevention program is the code enforcement. So um, I'm the primary code official um, for Bemidji. Um, we have a number of different types of buildings that we would inspect for fire code um, items and fire safety items on an annual basis. Um, and then we also are, are very thorough when new buildings are being constructed uh, to make sure that fire safety features are incorporated and incorporated properly on, on the front side. So um, fire prevention is, is really the best way uh, to save a life and um, to minimize damage uh, from a fire. So. Um, as we get to these final moments, then I did want to have a chance to touch on the amount of training and the, the work that your, your teams do to stay, make sure they're up to date and safe. Tell me a little about some of the training requirements for Solway Fire Department. How often are they getting together for that? Sure. So we, um, we train monthly um, and, and meet for, we meet for a business meeting monthly and then we meet for a training meeting monthly. Um, additionally, all of our firefighters need Firefighter 1 and Firefighter 2 um, within a year of joining uh, our department. And so we really, uh, of course, it's great when people come to us with that training already. That usually doesn't happen. Um, sure. And so we take that first year to really just get them um, comfortable with, uh, with being part of the department, knowing the ropes there. Um, and then we use that year to, to get them trained with, um, with Firefighter 1 and Firefighter 2. Um, beyond that, then it's really, uh, it's, you know, department specific training. Um, we, we do things like pump operations to make sure that uh, a firefighter is capable of getting water out of the truck and to where they need it to be. Um, it's emergency vehicle driving training. Um, it's, you know, hoses and ladders and all kinds of things like that that really equate to safety on a fire scene. Okay. And Dave, quickly, how, how, how much training do your guys go through? Yep, we have similar training. Um, our, our new recruits, um, it's 100 plus hours before they even get to see an emergency scene um, to make sure that they can do the skills safely. And then we also have various positions in which we do sp position specific training. And then for us, we've got um, some specialty teams, whether it's a water and ice, a rope rescue, hazardous materials team that, that also have additional hours um, training. But it's um, thousands of hours a year that Bemidji firefighters spend on training. Okay. Well, listen, we could have talked about this for, I'm sure, a whole nother hour here, but I appreciate you guys coming and talking to us and giving us some information about the departments and fire protection. I appreciate you tuning in tonight. Um, if you want more information about either department, please visit one of the websites here listed on the bottom of your screen. Um, on the Bemidji site, you can certainly access your annual report and get some more data. Um, and in the meantime, join me next time. Thank you.